Only 35% of respondents to this Reuters poll said that they thought that Joe Biden has done a good job with the economy. So is the average American's perceptions of Biden's economic record accurate? The answer is a bit more nuanced than you might think. And if Biden wants to have any shot at winning re-election, he must convince people that the answer is yes. So today, we're going to break down the good and bad of Joe Biden's economic policies and talk about their impact on the 2024 election and the future of the American economy as a whole. And you can then decide for yourself if Biden has done a good, bad, or meh job. If you like learning about the world of business, economics, or personal finance in a fun, level-headed, and educational way, you should definitely click that little subscribe button because I promise you will love my videos. I do my very best to produce the highest quality educational videos that I can to help you and me better understand the world and be more successful in it. So let's jump into learning about if Biden has done a good job with the economy. To start, Biden really has two economic records. One begins in late 2021 and consists of legislative wins of infrastructure, semiconductor production, and renewable energy, which he then preserved in a debt ceiling deal with Republicans. I think most people would agree that whether you agree with the policies or not, these are pretty big wins that Biden can hang his hat on. Getting anything significant passed in the US government is a really big achievement, and Biden's infrastructure and semiconductor bills are likely to have a really positive effect on the United States economy for years to come. Plus, many people think that Biden won the debt ceiling negotiations with Kevin McCarthy. But all that success is overshadowed by the record of his first months in office when his American Rescue Plan pumped $1.9 trillion of demand into an already supply-constrained economy. The result was the tightest job market in memory and a surge in inflation to the highest rate we've seen in 40 years that still hangs over Biden's approval ratings and decreases his prospects for re-election today. Now, Biden hasn't distinguished between these two records. It's all Bidenomics, a vision intended to grow the middle class and build stuff like roads and factories. But this doesn't tell us much about what actually distinguishes Biden from other presidents or other presidential candidates. Don't they all claim they want a stronger middle class, more roads and factories? I mean, Trump said the same things, right? Biden's economic plans have been pretty cookie cutter and his early agenda was even less novel. The rescue plan was just old fashioned Keynesian demand stimulus, which only really stood out because of its size. I don't know if they were aware that they were doing this in the moment, but Biden's team designed the American rescue plan with the 2009 economy in mind. When he and President Obama faced a deep recession, which despite their best efforts, was followed by a sluggish years long recovery. Biden's team most likely thought that the economy back in 2009 would have recovered much more quickly if more money had been funneled into it. But the reality is that 2021 is not 2009, despite Biden's political strategist saying that Biden, quote, faced an immediate economic crisis when he took office, end quote, he really didn't. By January of 2021, the economic crisis brought on by COVID-19 was essentially over, even if the health crisis wasn't. Yes, thousands of people were still getting sick, but despite this, as lockdowns were lifted and vaccines approved, businesses were furiously rehiring. Payroll growth averaged at 800,000 a month over the last six months of 2020 in percentage terms. This is the most robust streak preceding a new president's inauguration since 1952. The American Rescue Plan was designed to bolster demand in an economy that already had plenty of demand and not enough supply. And you know what that leads to? Inflation. But Biden's camp still tries to boast that job growth under Biden has been the strongest of any president going back to Ronald Reagan. And we can all see what they are trying to imply here when they say that. They're saying that Biden is responsible for said job growth. However, most economists agree that the high job growth numbers at the beginning of Biden's presidency were likely a holdover of a generalized recovery from the pandemic, which would have happened under any president, Republican or Democrat. But Biden's team asserts that the rescue plan is the reason why the United States recovery has been stronger than in other countries with less stimulus. And that might be true. But what the rescue plan did not address was a lack of supply of workers. With the labor force depressed by retirements, the virus, and reduced immigration, the result was the tightest labor market in memory. This lack of supply led to increased wages for many, especially historically disadvantaged groups like Blacks, Hispanics, and workers without college degrees. But despite many of the benefits a tight labor market brought, many of these benefits have been negated by inflation. It soared from 2% just before the pandemic to a peak of 9.1% last year, as gasoline prices leaped in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, inflation has since retreated to 4% as gasoline prices dropped, and the Fed has scrambled to increase interest rates at the fastest clip since the 1970s. Still, underlying inflation has stubbornly stayed around 4 or 5%. Inflation is the main reason why voters disapprove of Biden's handling of the economy by a 2 to 1 ratio. 
If inflation doesn't fade of its own accord, the Federal Reserve might have to raise interest rates even further and push the economy into recession, which won't help Biden's approval ratings. No president wants a recession to occur when they're running for re-election. Historically, voters haven't really punished presidents for economic hardship brought on by events beyond their control. For example, George W. Bush's approval ratings actually rose after the 9-11 attacks brought on a recession, as did Donald Trump's when COVID first hit in 2020. If a recession occurs due to the Fed's rate hikes, Biden could point to the rest of the advanced world and be like, Lo, yo, look at all these other countries that are struggling with this inflation thing. This isn't my fault. But the problem with this argument is that it's logically inconsistent for Biden to disown inflation while taking credit for tight labor markets, since they're mirror images of the same thing, an overheated economy. Tight labor markets raise wages to attract talent, leading to increased costs to make things, leading to employees wanting more money to buy even more expensive goods. It's the classic wage price spiral. And while economists debate how much stimulus contributed to this overheating, they widely agree that the Biden-led stimulus played a significant part. Voters are thus less inclined to give Biden a pass, especially since Republicans, and even some Democrats, keep reminding them of this connection. If Biden's early agenda was all about macroeconomics, unemployment, and inflation, his subsequent agenda has been about microeconomics, which essentially means the pieces that lead to economic growth. Trump's frequent infrastructure weeks during his presidency never actually led to new infrastructure. Biden, by contrast, got a massive infrastructure bill through Congress in 2021. And this bill went beyond roads and bridges to water treatment and high-speed internet. Plus, the Chips and Science Act last year was the most significant federal commitment to industrial policy in recent history. And despite its ridiculous name, the Inflation Reduction Act offered significant incentives for renewable energy and electric vehicles, which many people think is a good thing, including the Treasury Department, which has said that these initiatives are positively impacting the United States economy. Factory construction, for example, has shot up, particularly for electronics. To be fair, not all of this is due to legislation. Semiconductor companies were already increasing their United States footprint in response to growing demand and pressure to diversify away from Asia because China doesn't like to play nice. Nonetheless, business leaders' comments make it clear that bills like the CHIPS Act affected their decision-making process. The problem that Biden has here is that these massive investments in chips, infrastructure, and other forms of stimulus have a negligible impact on voters' lives in the short term, with the most benefit being seen down the road. But these bills' impact on inflation and unemployment are significant in the short term. If Biden can survive a Republican onslaught in the next presidential election, he will likely reap the long-term benefits of the infrastructure, chips, and debt deals. Biden is trying to play the long game here, but he might not be around to see it. And I don't just mean that he's going to die, I mean that he might not get elected again. Anyways, do you think that Biden has done a good job with the economy? What do you think he should have done instead? I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.